Hey guys, Adam and Norm here in my cave, and as part of Intel Gamer Days, we have partnered up with Lenovo, Intel, and PC Gamer to do something I have always wanted to do. We are gonna take this beautiful Lenovo Legion gaming laptop, and we're gonna take it completely apart and build a shadow box of all its internal components. I know, laptops might be pretty from the outside, but I also think they're gorgeous on the inside, and I love seeing all of that ingenuity on display. And this laptop is Lenovo's Legion 7i. It comes from Lenovo's product labs where their engineers take the latest hardware, you know, the CPU, GPU, storage, and battery, and pack it into this form factor. So I'm gonna take this over to Tested's workshop, get to disassembling it, revealing those components, and bring it back to you, Adam, where you're gonna, of course, null it out. Nulling! It's gonna be so much fun. Okay, so we're back here at the Tested Studio, and I'm now joined by Wes Fenlin of PC Gamer. Hey, Norm. Excited to be here. It's been a minute. Yeah, and excited to have this opportunity to take apart this laptop. Yeah, it's a Lenovo Legion 7i that we've got here uh, with an Intel i9 processor and an RTX 3080, which is kind of surprising considering the size of this thing. I'm really curious about how those components are laid out with that spec, like what the cooling's gonna be like. It, yeah. It's and gotta be pretty well designed. We're gonna find out because we're taking it apart. <laughs> All right, so there's, you know, I see Phillips head screws in the back here, a bunch of those. So we got our drivers, got some spudgers. Uh, this is gonna be fun. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, we're in. Oh, wow. So this is pretty different than I feel like uh, a gaming laptop of say five years ago would look, where you would open it up and you'd probably just see mainboard, you would see exposed fans, you would maybe see heat pipes if it was like a higher end gaming laptop and you see your RAM, but this is kind of all covered. And I think this is fan, you see two fans, it's all cooling. I believe it's all vapor chamber. Oh! Uh, or maybe it's hiding heat pipes, but I think it's vapor chamber. Yeah, which is the exactly the type of cooling you would have on a dedicated graphics card. Yep. So battery here makes a lot of sense. I see, you know, I see a lot of custom uh, PCB, um, and we're gonna make sure we carefully remove all of the places where things might be connected, even around this. You know, this a light lot shirt. of ribbons, yeah. Yeah. I think the uh, the design of this interior is sort of is following the same trends that you see on desktop motherboards the last few years, especially like the gaming and enthusiast oriented ones, where they started covering up a lot mm. more of the PCB, putting nice heat shields on things, and just kind of making them more aesthetic with uh, either black shielding or white shielding, some red. You know. Well, even. Storage like M.2 storage can get hot, and the yeah. shielding they put heat actually sinks on them. helps. Yeah. All right. Remove the 80 watt hour battery here. If you've never taken apart a laptop before, you might be surprised how much of the laptop body is just battery. Yeah. Uh, this this one's actually pretty pretty compact. There there used to be a time when if you looked in like an, an Apple like a MacBook or something. It was like 70% battery, and there's so much battery, but they've gotten more efficient and the components have gotten a lot more efficient, so you can get more mileage out of fairly small form factor battery. I'm really excited about this part, Yeah, West. this is probably gonna be the coolest looking component in the, in the whole laptop, oh, my favorite anyway. This is the vapor chamber and fans coming off Ooh. of... Oh, and you can see... Everything's underneath. Wow, there's the GPU and CPU. Okay, we're gonna unplug this one cable here, right there. Here we go. Oh. Wow. All right. That is neat. So you can see it's all one piece. You got a lot, a lot of copper in here connecting our GPU and CPU heat spreaders mm -hmm. to connect to the vapor chamber and then everything kind of goes out to the to the fans. I have some uh, aesthetic considerations as we're building this out as a display. Yeah. Is this gonna be front facing or do we wanna show this side? What's more visually appealing? It's kind of a tough choice. I, I love the, the exposed copper. Mm -hmm. um, 
the the thermal material maybe isn't the isn't the prettiest. Um, but if you're going for you know showing that raw functionality, you yeah. want to go with that side. But the back side is also really really nice and neat. Yeah. And it's a cool shape too. Mm -hmm. It's kind mm -hmm. of got it's sort of like an owl look to it almost. <laughs> Things to the side later on. Yeah. Okay, Wes, so we've now revealed the CPU and GPU. Tell me a little bit about these. Yeah, so you clean these up, the nice and shiny now. So this is the, the RTX 3080, and then this is a Intel Core i9, 11th gen. So this is an eight core processor, which feels kind of crazy. You think about gaming laptops a few years ago, we're kind of stuck in that, that quad core you know, generation for, for years and years, and now we've got an eight core CPU in here. Uh, and this is the memory for that GPU yep. around it. And there's the motherboard. Really compact. Oh, and there was a shield for one of our I.O. ports. Wow. That's beautiful. It's kind of amazing how small it is considering, I mean, look how close you know, the RAM modules are right next to the CPU, the GPU's right here. So much stuff packed into this, so much I.O. all in one place. Well, I'm interested in seeing this uh, this board underneath the touchpad. I, mm. I'm a sucker for any color PCB that's not, <laughs> you know, your traditional green uh, or or even black. So I really like this blue here. Um, and I guess if we peel this off, we'll see the keyboard, the back yeah. side of the keyboard. If we pop this open. Can you tell that we have taken <laughs> half of the laptop apart at this point? You can't. Not really. Wow. Yeah. So. If you're actually using this laptop, uh, one of the star features is going to be this screen. You know, gaming laptops used to use kind of crappy TN panels. They were limited to like 60 hertz. We've come so far in the last few years with IPS screens. This is like 165 hertz refresh. Uh, it's a really nice like matte screen mm -hmm. too. It's not glossy. Uh, I prefer a matte screen for for glare. And I like that they've went with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Yeah, that's year. that seems to be a bit of a trend as well. I, I don't know how often you play games at 1610, but definitely useful for for productivity. Here comes the keyboard. Nice. I love this ribbon cable. Wes, it's all taken apart. We did it. We elegantly destroyed this laptop. <laughs> this was so much fun. Yeah. Uh, we, I love that every layer we peeled back, we felt we could go further. Yeah, and even hidden under pieces of tape, we'd find like more QR codes showing off you know, product information, great for the people servicing uh, this system. What, do you have a favorite piece of what we took oh my apart gosh. here? Uh, I think it's gonna be a toss up between the cooling and the motherboard, I think that is just the density of chips on there. Uh, so much going on yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, this is going to be so much fun for Adam to knoll out and lay out. Um, so let's get this back over to the cave where we can have him lay it out. Sounds good. Okay, Adam, so Dude. I've taken apart this laptop. Is that beautiful? <laughs> I, I just love, I mean, you know, yeah. Sorry, I, I was literally <laughs> like, I was going down a rabbit hole in my brain of like, it, I just think of the hundreds of thousands of hours that led to all of this and then, yeah, there's something so magnificent about looking at all the internal components. And it's one of those things that as we kept on taking, peeling the layers back, yeah. uh, we got to see like things like the cooling, Look like where all that. the engineering is. Oh. Um, but it's ready for you to knoll out. Oh, okay. So please take your time, knoll these out. We want to use as many of these pieces as possible. All right. uh, really cool things, including even you know the keyboard. Oh mechanism, Man. the trackpad. You can Ooh. see all like cool things like how the hinges work for the, the haptic feedback. This feels really nice. <laughs> These key, <laughs> the key presses are annoyingly good. Um, this is the trackpad? Yeah. Oh, dude. Ooh. Isn't that neat how that... Yeah. It's oh, a mechanical... Man. Can you imagine someone Actuation. going, hey, you know what you've got to do? You've got to make a switch that's five inches wide with a total travel of maybe... 10, 12 thousandths of an inch is what I'm gonna guess. That is a tight tolerance, man. And, and that's, they make these very specific decisions based on you know all their experience and feedback. Um, but go have at it, and then we're gonna take what you design out here yeah. and then mount it into a shadow box we're gonna build. Okay, I'm gonna have fun. To begin with, the shadow box is going to be this dimension. So this is a perfect thing for me to work on, but I need to transfer everything off. So I'm gonna put it on a piece of foam board and then I'll retransfer everything back. God, wouldn't it suck to trip and knock all this stuff over? It's part of my thinking that I'm always imagining whatever the worst possible case scenario is. I am so all about these cooling fans, man. All right, let's see. Proper knolling of something like this, it isn't just about laying it all down at right angles to each other. It's really also about like getting a, a balance to the layout of the parts. The goal is that you can see it and understand that all these go together. And it shouldn't feel like a cacophony. It shouldn't feel like there's no rhyme or reason. It should feel like everything has a breath around it. And in order to do that, I kind of have to lay it down and then pull it back and lay it down and pull it back and sort of see what works. These are the speakers. <laughs> wow, that is neat. I love that they've got two different wires too. Let's see here. Maybe like that.
That's great. That's a nice little bit. Ooh, that's not bad. It's a little crowded, but I kind of like it. Maybe. No, 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 no. Is there a place for this? There should be. Ooh, that's actually not bad. It's a funny one, but if this rises up above this, This is a much better view. Yeah. Part of me is like, I can't believe how cool it looks. And part of me is like, that's it? That's everything? I mean, if you really wanted to like take some of the first transistors and build this thing, the size of it would be like, I'm not even kidding, probably like five or 10 cubic kilometers. I'm not even remotely joking. <laughs> That's how big this thing would be with the earliest computer technology. That's how much we've miniaturized. All right. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. No, it's great. The center focus is here, but your eye moves around. There's not a single thing that holds your eye too long. It allows you to move around. Look at the variety of things. You can see the pairings. Oh, I get the most fun job. And this one, what is the, yeah, I think that's upright. I think you want to be able to read it all. Yeah. I love it when I see the handwriting, just like somewhere in a factory, someone's like, all right. I think we are properly knolled, and to know me is to love me. All right, how do you feel about this, Adam? I love it. Um, the parts are so pretty. I mean, just looking at the internal components, the different colors of the circuit boards, the green, the blue, the gray. The way light bounces off some uh -huh. really nicely, like there's some matte finish, there's a really reflective finish on some of these package covers. I also love that when you, when you dial in, like here you see separation of like these tiny little LED lights. I'm like, wow, okay, things are pretty small. And then you like zoom your eye in and you see all of these metal <laughs> contacts and you're like, I have no idea what's going on. It's like the, 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 what do you call it? The stages of miniaturization are slowly revealed as you stare at it. Mm -hmm. And every side is like, you know, a back side and a front side. Mm -hmm. And aesthetically, you know, deciding to put the cooling apparatus, yeah. not necessarily that matte black side, but showing all the copper. Yeah. You know, that's the thing that makes this work. Oh yeah, there was no, there was no <laughs> question that this was the side to see as opposed to that. There's just like, no. Yeah, this is a story, right? There's so much going on here. Uh, and I really, I like graphically how, as I look at it and I kind of squint my eyes, I get a, my eye moves around in a sort of very balanced way. You know, it doesn't focus on any one thing and nothing looks too out of place and everything feels like it's got a little room to breathe. Now, this is just gonna be the intermediate staging. Yeah. We're gonna very carefully uh, <laughs> first document this in yeah. photos, yeah. but then bring it back over to the test shop where Jen Schachter, uh, who's built shadow boxes before, yeah. is gonna construct one of this size. I love it. I also love the ribbon cables all splayed oh, out. Yeah. Um, I think that's a really nice look. Dude, this is, you gave me the best job. This is like, this is so much fun. I can't wait to see it finished. Absolutely. So we're back in the tested workshop, and now that Adam has nulled out all the components of the Lenovo laptop, it's time to build the frame. And for that, I'm joined by fabricator and designer Jen Schachter here. Jen, the that's gonna be a big frame. Yes. It's gonna be like 24 inches by we think 40, 40 inches yeah. is how we measured it. Uh, what goes into making a shadow box that big? So it's, it's a basic box construction, but there's a couple considerations for the, the display element of it. So there's sort of like a liner inside of a shadow box. Um, back, back in the day, a long time ago, I used to work in a couple different picture framing shops, and so I picked up some skills on how to actually do this. This is a little bit different than the way that I've done shadow boxes in the past because we have some different design considerations. Yeah. Usually when you build a shadow box, the customer gives you the thing, they leave it with you, you mount it, you put the whole piece together and you hand them a finished sealed thing. But in our case, we have to be able to get inside this thing from both the back and the front. So I designed it in a different way so that we can access it fully throughout every step of the process. Um, I made this little prototype. So this is like a proof of concept of how we're gonna put this together. 
And the way that I thought about this is there's three basic components. So there's a lid that's going to go on the front, and this will remove off. Mm -hmm. And we will attach this to the box uh, with some magnets. They Ooh. rolled away here, but we'll just use some little earth magnets that will countersink in there on the back of this and on the front piece here. This is the main box construction, so this is where all of the parts are going to be kind of viewed into. And this has a matte board liner all the way around. And then there's a separate back panel, which oh, pops out. That's going to make mounting the pieces, yeah. transferring from the mold layout to here, so much easier. Yeah, so I, I figured this would work for, for what we need. We can fully access this. We can figure out how to glue and mount everything if we want to do different heights. And then this will just pop back into the back. If it fits correctly, then all of your seams, all of the mat board pieces, should be virtually invisible. So you'll have one continuous sort of backdrop that's all connected, um, and all you'll be focusing on is the contents. That's awesome. Uh, and then uh, in terms of dimensions consideration, you can get shadow boxes, you can make shadow boxes in all different thicknesses. Uh, because the components here, you know, about an inch thick at most, that's how you know, thick the laptop is, uh, we're thinking maybe like four inches is the, yeah, the, the volume. Yeah. And there's, a, I mean, there's a lot of math involved in this, but I was kind of explaining like you can, you can calculate all of this mathematically at the start and be like, okay, I know the mat board is 16th of an inch and this is an inch and a half and yada yada. But, but because of discrepancies in the tools and the material and human error, um, everything is not going to be perfect. It's not an exact science. So the way I'm going to approach this is to build a section, take measurements off of that, and then use those measurements to build the next piece so that it's it's kind of dictated by the process as opposed to just throwing numbers at it and hoping everything fits. And that's the fun part of this yeah. kind of, of fabrication. You came prepared with a plan, but we're going to let the process reveal the finished project. Yeah. Jen, this looks amazing. It's coming together. Oh, things going according to plan? Yeah, yeah. I'm like surprised that all of the corners and the tolerances are, they're pretty good. Uh, it's much bigger than I thought. Like I saw the dimensions, but the, seeing it, this is like the biggest shadow box that I've ever put together. So yeah, I did the, the glue up of the box. This is the box piece. This is going to be the lid piece. They both have a recess. So this has a little recess along the back for the, the whole back mm -hmm. of the frame. And then the lid has a recess for the acrylic and for our LEDs. That's right. So now that, that's why you don't buy the acrylic before you build this because of all the you know minor differences from the measurements. Uh, but you have also now purchased the acrylic. We... Yeah, it's here, so we can we can test it. Yeah, let's do yeah. a test fit. I like how light this lid is. Yeah. Um, which tells me that your design of planning to affix it to the box with magnets should be just fine. In theory, we'll see. I mean, they're pretty strong uh, neodymium, like little earth magnets. And I think if we put enough of them, hopefully it'll have enough of a grab to hold it without sliding. Worst comes to worst, when the whole thing is finished, we could always just screw it in and hide, you know, hide the screws. But the acrylic seems to fit. I think this is going to work. Awesome. Um, it's custom cut to yep. this size, just local at a plastic store. Uh, this gets kind of bound in kind of the same way you would have uh, a, a standard non shadow box frame. Exactly, right? yeah. I've got, let's see if I can sneak it out here. I've got this thing called a uh, framing point gun, and this shoots almost like little arrows um, into the side of the frame. So you mm. like line this up flush with your acrylic, and all the way around you'll have these little arrows holding it into position. Um, and the points that I'm choosing for this are flexible, so we can we can affix it, and then if we need to remove the acrylic, we can always bend them out and Got it, it, got it. And then there's enough clearance here uh, for the LED strip, which we don't know whether we're going to orient it with the lights facing in or facing down into the shadow box. I think that's going to be something worth testing once we have the assembly closer to finish. Um, but next, what's next? Yeah, so I'm going to put the magnet holes in, and we'll test to see if it's strong enough to hold the lid on. Um, I'm going to use a Forstner bit, so just like a little teeny tiny Forstner bit that's about the same diameter as these magnets, and countersink some holes all the way around. So I'll 
measure carefully for the positioning on this and have them made up with the magnets on the box. And then hopefully it'll be, you know, a, a enough magnetism to grab and hold the lid in position. While still also being glued to yeah. both sides and maybe press fit. So you want a pretty, pretty Definitely, good yeah. I tested one out. This, this force nerve, it's actually just a touch too small, which is oh, good because I can hammer it and it'll be a nice mechanical grab. Awesome, well, let's get to that. So excited that that works. Ah, the alignment looks pretty good. And it feels, I think that's gonna be strong enough. I definitely think that's gonna be strong enough with the acrylic. I kind of want to put the acrylic in and see how well it holds. But that's, I mean, here, let's see. There's a little bit of wobble, but like, unless there's an earthquake, I don't think it's gonna shake that much. I think this is the way to go, Jen. I think so too. And this is going to be easier to mount too, which makes our lives easier. Why not? Totally. So side lighting uh, and side mounting the mm -hmm. LED strips. And before we actually peel off that sticky backing, you'll need to put in the acrylic. Yes. I'm going to get the plexi in there and I'm going to shoot those uh, framing darts mm -hmm. to kind of hold it in position. And then we can mount the LEDs behind that. Jen, this looks amazing. Thank you. It's all finished, as in there's finishing work on it. Yeah, a lot happened since since our last check-in. So I think we left things off where I had built the box and installed the magnets, and these mm -hmm. fit really well. Um, so after that, I went ahead and primed and painted the whole thing. Um, did a couple coats of prime and then sand to raise up the grain and then sand it back down mm. nice and smooth. Um, and then I went ahead and installed all the mat board. So this is a uh, foam core backing with a mat board on top of it. And then I laid in each of these uh, liner pieces along the sides in a very specific order to get everything to fit nice and tight and hopefully hide all of the seams. Right. So they don't need to be mitered in the same way in no. a corner, just kind of overlapping in the same way, matte black everything. Yes. Uh, and that gets, gets us in a place where we're ready to mount those knolled pieces into the cavity here. <laughs>
This is magnificent. I'm so <laughs> happy with how it turned out. It's so satisfying. I know. <laughs> wow. Uh, so obviously the components are now mounted in. It was a lot of fun and a little bit of a challenge doing that yeah. problem solving of like not just taking what Adam had knolled and then you know replicating that exact knolling and arrangement here, but also deciding things like elevation, mm -hmm. right? Relative to pieces, uh, having like an uneven topography all adds to this floating parts uh, orientation. Yeah, not to mention mounting everything so it's perfectly parallel right, and right. not getting any glue ooze on anything, but I think it came out pretty well. And the final piece is we did decide to mount the LED strip uh, facing inward, and that is now done on this lid. Yeah. And this is the acrylic that Adam's gonna be writing and labeling everything on, uh, but let's do a test. Yeah. All right, so watch the magnets. Nice. And, and this will obviously get hidden down, yep. drop down through the corner. Oh, it looks like a museum piece. I know. As it is right now. You wanna plug in? Yeah, let's LED see what it looks strip? like with the lights on. Wow. Oh, it's like, uh, I don't know, it looks like some kind of magical display with the with the lights and the layers mm -hmm. like it, it has that museum quality but it also kind of looks like a like a store display of like some elevated product that you would look at jen you did such a great job here super satisfying to see it all to come together are you happy with this build oh i'm thrilled i mean it's it is just a black box but like it's such a satisfying black box to look at and we're going to take this whole thing, whole arrangement over back to the cave where Adam's gonna do his final touches uh, and then we can deliver this to Lenovo. What Dude. do you think, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> this is the nicest thing that's ever happened to something that I've knolled. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jen did an amazing job with this frame uh, and we had a really fun time taking the design that you knolled out uh, and then figuring out things like how high, like the yeah. topography of it all. It's really, really nice. And uh, you gained this whole extra layer of interest and of separation by changing the heights. Uh, it's, it's just fantastic. I'm still totally obsessed with these cooling fans. <laughs> yeah, the whole vapor chamber here, like the reflectivity I mentioned, that yeah. just yeah. really, really is noticeable. Um, so we have one final finishing touch. What is uh, it? We'd love for you to be able to label and oh. point out some of these components. Um, so, like in white pen? Like it love that. Would oh, be that's great! Oh, I would love to do that. Um, this is just stunning. I want to do this with like, I would love a set of art of like my favorite electronics, mm -hmm. just like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got an iPod with a bullet hole through the <laughs> middle of it, but this is also pretty cool. get tired of writing hovering over the thing it's describing all the layers yeah and it really came together at the end I mean, it did better than I could have ever imagined oh I'm so glad I'm so glad this was really 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 fun um, I found these new acrylic markers that are nice and uh, nice and bright it's this is just it's absolutely gorgeous awesome well hope you guys enjoyed that and thank you Lenovo Intel and PC gamer for giving us the opportunity to make this awesome shadow box now Everything's got to go in a shadow yeah, box. Yeah, no, I seriously, I want to take. <laughs> I want to go to the drawer of old phones and start doing this to those.